You know what? We were lucky because I also found a beer can that was unopened. So I figure, what the heck? It's a little dirty on the outside, but it's sealed on top. So let's crack it and, uh, oh yeah, you hear that? And uh, treat ourselves to, uh, we'll call this a, a freebie, a freebie beach beer. Uh, because, you know, we've been doing hard work out here and I think we've earned it. So cheers, bottom up. Good morning. So you might not be able to tell from the background here, but I am actually at a local beach and the reason why I'm hunkered down sort of <laughs> in this reedy hollow uh, in the dunes is just because it's so windy. I can hear the wind on the beach side just, I don't know, a few hundred yards over. Uh, so just to uh, say good morning, I figured I'd hunker down here and record and start to pick up the type of trash that I want to try to collect today, which of course, as per the title, are different types of cans. So I've already started to notice some in these little woodsy areas, pockets along the shore on the dune side of uh, this beach. And I'll have a lot more to say about where these cans come from, who's leaving them behind, and maybe a little bit about sort of what we can do to kind of reduce them, which is uh, sort, of, sort of the point here, <laughs> is to try to minimize the impact that this type of trash has on your local environment. So yeah, I've already found a few and I imagine I'm going to find many more. So I'm going to start the clock at an, for an hour and see how many different types of cans we can collect. Everything from soda cans to beer cans and all types of cans in between. So yeah, let's uh, grab our bags, our trash pickers, head on over to the beach side and get trashed. Right. Well, <laughs> we did an hour of uh, can collecting, and uh, I'll try to keep this uh, wrap-up brief because it is windy out here today, and unfortunately there's not much you can do about that, even with the mic filter that I have here. So there's just a few key things I wanted to sort of mention that I feel like I noticed in collecting cans. And if you follow our videos here regularly, you know that Cans usually aren't a priority for a couple of reasons. I mean, they are obviously worth collecting, which is what I'm gonna discuss now, but I'm so obsessed with uh, the problem of plastics that that's usually what my focus is. So this is why I thought I'd take a break from the typical plastic gathering and, and focus on cans for today and sort of what negative impacts uh, they might have on local environments and for me here, my local marine environment. And again, if you're just going out and trying to collect trash, I mean, you're going to fill up real quick on all sorts of other plastic stuff. So you might not even really notice cans. I mean, you might sort of pick up a few because you're picking up so much other stuff. But you can see here, if you just focus on cans for an hour, you're going to find a lot of them. And that's exactly what I was <laughs> able to do. So uh, in just one hour, I was able to collect 75 cans total. So congratulations to the winner of uh, my weekly Instagram contest, whoever guessed closest, for an hour beach clean collecting cans. And 75 is a lot. You know, unfortunately, I don't know how many of these are recyclable. Uh, some of the more recent ones, I could probably clean and recycle, but there's so many more that you probably saw from the collection montage that 
if you look at these, I, I, the print is completely worn off. Uh, they're dirty, they're crushed, more or less. Uh, so there's really no way that they'll be accepted by most recycling machines, I think. Um, and that's a shame. In terms of how these, again, actually hurt marine environments, I'm not an expert myself on uh, metal pollution and exactly what that does, but I know that metals are treated with certain chemicals that aren't great leaching into natural habitats where other creatures are supposed to be living. So picking them up definitely is going to help uh, on, on that scale as these degrade over time. And furthermore, a lot of these, they sort of get fractured, right? And they become these broken up bits that will can cut animals for sure. I, I haven't read many examples myself, but you needn't go farther than the just Googling turtle straw nose video to see examples where animals can really get messed up by things as simple as plastic straws. So I would imagine that animals are not faring uh, great with cans either. I mean, you imagine a turtle or some critter crawling across something like this that's half buried in the sand could get cut up, it could get hurt pretty bad. And you might be wondering, well, what are the odds of that? Well, I just picked up 75 cans in an hour and there's tons more out here that uh, ideally I would want to collect, but I'm going to have to come back as I always do because my bag is full. And exhibit A is how this bag is tearing apart from some of these sharper edges. So I've seen it myself with other types of pollution. Uh, those ring packs, those soda ring packs, how those get can get tangled around creatures. I've seen that. I've seen strings, fishing line tangled around seagulls' legs. So it's almost like there's a Murphy's Law of Trash. If it you can imagine it hurting animals in some way, it probably is. And again, that, that adds up. You might think that might be a rare occurrence, but um, it only has to happen every once in a while for that to really make a negative impact, unfortunately. So it's totally worth cleaning up. And again, in terms of the types of trash, lots of soft drink type stuff, energy drink, uh, a lot of these hard seltzers popping up now, and a lot of beer, degraded beer cans, of course. But you know what? We were lucky because I also found a beer can that was unopened. So I figure, what the heck? It's a little dirty on the outside, but it's sealed on top. So let's crack it and... Uh, Oh yeah, you hear that? And uh, treat ourselves to, uh, we'll call this a, a freebie. A freebie beach beer. Uh, because, you know, we've been doing hard work out here and I think we've earned it, so. Cheers, bottom up. No, I'm kidding, I'm not <laughs> not actually gonna drink this. Uh, I'm gonna pour this out, actually. Uh, yeah, that's pretty gross. Um, and you find these sometimes on the beach on open beers. Uh, but I might go home and <laughs> treat myself to an actual good beer instead. So, uh, yeah, that's really all I wanted to say today. Again, it's interesting to find this stuff because even with these metal cans, there's plastic components to it. And as I talk about in my other videos, plastic degrades in all sorts of negative ways with various chemicals that pollute natural habitats. So uh, I would imagine even on the labels on some of these, the dyes that, are, again, are in some of these labels. None of that's good for marine natural habitat. So picking up cans is, is great to do. And you will notice I saw a lot of these in these bushy areas where I think people come in the summer and party and hang out and just toss them. But a good rule, if you wanna find any sort of beach trash, but certainly cans and things that can roll, is just go downhill. Uh, if you go to the lowest points where trash is gathering, you'll find a lot of it collected. And that's what I found in a lot of these sort of little weedy woodsy thickets along the dunes here by the by the water so actually more cans in those areas than even along the beach but obviously those were washing up with tides too so yeah certainly some that occur from people just leaving them here but i think many more as well they tumble down these cliff sides as roadside runoff i mean you don't have to go far along a road to see trash left alongside of the road tipped over from garbage cans that sort of thing and as you've seen probably from if you go back to previous videos, I can go to a river a hundred miles away and find the same trash, unfortunately, that I'm gonna find eventually, sometimes, I don't know, weeks, months, maybe even years washed up on the beaches here. So it's all connected and it's all worthwhile cleaning for those reasons. So anyways, I could go on forever about recycling and that sort of stuff, but I'll save it for another video because we're gonna do lots more of obviously different types of collecting. I have bottle collecting, beach clean ideas I wanna cover, all sorts of other things. 
uh, as you may have noticed from some of my upped challenges over the past few weeks, uh, if you're a subscriber. And if you're not a subscriber and you like this sort of kind of fun educational stuff, uh, please do subscribe. It's uh, been really great. I, I learned so much just from uh, reading comments of people who have found things their own or who are involved in conservation in different ways. If you go back, for example, I did a, a 500 bottle cap clean challenge a few weeks ago, I think, and I got some really interesting comments where somebody mentioned how in Florida they're doing a, uh, some scientists or something are doing something where they're trying to get algae to leach onto these bags of bottle caps and to denitrogenize the water, which is bad for marine life if there's too much nitrogen in the water. Uh, really fascinating stuff, and it's like, oh, okay, I was wondering what we can do with bottle caps. Can we recycle them? Can we use them for art? There's maybe various options, and that was one that I hadn't heard about. So, yeah, it, it's amazing just to uh, get more input from people and what their experiences are and sometimes research that they're, they're doing or just information that they've come across themselves, and I think that's what it's all about is, is sharing and learning more. So, yeah, please subscribe if you want to see more of this, and, uh, yeah, we'll be back next week with, with some, some more adventurous cleaning. So... Until next time, stay safe out there, be well, clean well, and I hope to see you on the beach soon.